Welcome to statistics. So we're going to look at the idea of taking a data set that happens to have two different categories and apply that to a scatter plot. Is this an invariably difficult process, but it does take just a little bit of thought. So I did another data set where I was looking at um, the number of boat registrations in a particular area in Florida and versus the number of man, uh, mante, mante, mante that were killed uh, in that same region. So now I'm just saying, well, what if we suppose for a second we're talking about two different counties in that region, so County A and County B. You know, so at this point, this, well, this data is a little bit fictitious, but it kind of uh, makes a pretty good point in terms of uh, adding categories. And it just adds another dimension to what we're looking at uh, when we look at data. So we're still going to be looking with this same lens of, is there a correlation between the data sets? And when, again, when we say correlation, we, what, one of the things we want to make sure that we're very clear about is that correlation has a particular association with it. We're concerned with what that correlation tells us in terms of the strength or the relationship between those two pieces. And normally we use R as the thing that's going to allow us to be able to determine that. Now most systems will give you an R squared value, which you then have to convert to an R value in order to uh, deal with that. In a couple of my other videos, I, I simply dealt with the R squared value, which is a pretty good indicator. Um, but R is a better indicator. So going forward from here, we're going to deal strictly with the R value. So anytime we get that R squared value, we're going to grab a calculator and we're going to do the square root of that value to figure out the R value. And that's going to be a better instance. And we're going to look at that here in a moment with this one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click and uh, pick these three different um, sets here. And I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to do a scatter plot with these three data sets. Now when I do that, you notice right away that the, the computer, Excel, automatically sets those up in two different groups. You have County A and County B. So County A is the blue dots, County B is the, the orange dots. And you can see that in both instances it looks like there is a positive trend with both sets of data, which is what we'd kind of expect. Um, so number of boats on the, on the, that are registered, the more you would expect the wildlife to be uh, affected by that, positive or negative. Now, when we do a trend line here, we're actually going to it'll ask us whether we want to do A or B. We can't, unfortunately, on this particular program, do both of them at the same time. And there's A, and I can double click on that, and I can say display the equation and display the R squared value. This R squared value comes out to be 0.9045. So I can just do the square root of that 0.9045, and it gives me an R squared value of 0.95, which means this is a very strong correlation. Um, and again, like the idea is that we want the R value to be as close to one or negative one as we can get it. Uh, in this case, uh, the R value here is, uh, this is a, a positive trend, and that's how we determine whether the R is negative or positive, which is looking at, in this instance, it's going to the right and it's going up, which means that is a positive correlation as opposed to a negative correlation. Negative simply means that it would be going to the right and going down. doesn't mean it's a bad correlation. It means it's bad correlation would mean this R value would be close to zero. That's a bad correlation. Negative correlation just simply means it has a negative slope to it. So when we look at this, we can see that trend line one, or the county A, has a positive slope and has an R squared value of 0.95. Now what we can then do is we can then go over and ask about the trim line and the, uh, the line again and this time we can say well what if we do county uh, do the other county instead of doing a we can take this do B and what we'd end up with when we did uh, when we do that is we'd find that the same equation or not uh, we'd have end up with a similar equation we'd end up with a similar R square which means we'd end up with a similar R value in this instance and when we do that we end up showing that both of them have the same trend now what we're doing here is we're taking categorical data county A and county B that's those are two different categories and each of them has numerical data embedded inside of it and we can look at that data and we can say oh look here is county A here's county B do they have the similar behavior so now again instead of just looking at a single data set we're essentially looking at two data sets and we're showing that both data sets have a similar behavior which again gives us even more strength to the idea that these two behaviors are indeed linked to each other now like I said 
This data wasn't originally broken up by county A and county B. This was me doing this for demonstration purposes only. So it'll go back and say, oh, look, the data definitely says this. This is real data. The original data set was real data, but me splitting this up is a demonstration, okay? Now you could probably go back and find the original data and show that by county you have a similar event occurring as well, but that's not what we did here. This is strictly talking about these pieces. Now, one other piece along with this R value that we want to make sure that we're clear on is near zero is bad. Okay, near zero means that there's no correlation. Uh, R is based upon a quantitative data set, meaning these are numbers. These are countable numbers that we're dealing with. Uh, they measure, the R value measures the strength of the relationship or the lack of thereof, um, and it is not resistant to outliers. So let's just say for a second, I, I just kind of picked this whole data set. Let's just say that we have uh, the following year was 920, and this particular year there were 220 five Manta deaths, okay? Now, assuming that my data set there, it doesn't actually include that, but what I can do is I can grab this and pull it down and grab that and pull it down, and now it does. See how that changes everything in my data set. This uh, value for R, uh, regression lines in general, are not um, insulated from these major outliers like this. So we had to learn to deal with these outliers because this particular one would cause some problems to the overall set because it changes the fit. It's no longer a good fit like it was before. It definitely changes the slope. So we gotta be um, uh, careful when we uh, talk about those uh, regression lines and what type of outliers we have and what to do about those outliers. Sometimes what we do is just take the outliers and you say, well, this is an issue for us. If we remove these outliers as being an isolated event, the system fits really well, but then we need to go back and say, well, how, how can we legitimately get rid of these outliers? And that's something we will address in another video. Another thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, this is not affected by the units. Okay, this R value right here that we get. So the R value in this instance was 0.95. That, that 0.95 R value is not affected by whatever units we're measuring here. So we could be measuring uh, acreage, we could be measuring people, yards, feet, whatever. The, the units we're actually measuring with does is not affected or will not affect the R value, which is actually a nice thing. Um, and then lastly, these R values are going to be positive or negative, like I said before. This one's going to be positive because it is a positive correlation, meaning it's going, it is an increasing line, meaning it, as we move to the right, we move up. A negative R value would still have a positive R squared value, but when we do the square root of that, we'd go to the, as we move to the right, we would go down. So we'd go down and right, and it'd be a negative in that instance. So that's how we would read that, and that's how we'd look at the idea of adding categories to our data. We just literally need to split the data up, and Excel will actually allow us to, to graph that automatically, uh, in fact, using different data points. And you can, you, can't, you can do it more with just two sets. You can do this multiple groups here, um, and it will automatically color divide these pieces for you, and then even create the key. All right, enjoy, and have a good day.